And as Pops always said, grab the club face with your mind. Boom. And there's the compression, there's the sound we want, right? Okay, so what we did is we, we threw the alignment rod on the ground. We helped you boys understand that when we're standing straight up and 50% of our foot is on this side, 50% is on this side. Okay, if I have the pressure equally distributed, I'm gonna keep my legs locked and I'm simply going to tilt over my belt line. Now, that's placing almost 100% of the weight up here. I'm, I don't even feel my heels on the ground. Here's the key. When I flex, I wanna keep my hips over my ankles and I'm flexing my knees down into the balls of my feet. Now, when I do that, I'm balancing myself to the point where I'm now 70, 30. The reason why I would start straight like this and get it is because when you keep your legs straight, right, the hip joint does what? Stays over the ankle, right? If I, if I flex into it right away, I could sit back and that's a problem. Now, what we were finding was true with both of your swings both, that setup was negatively affecting the swing. How? Well, for you, you were here, and because the center is now back here, your, your weight's already back, the club moved back towards that center. It wasn't very far off, it was a pretty good takeaway, but it had a little bit too much roll to it and went inside and under the forearm. Well, the funny thing about that is the minute I get more over it, instantaneously that club gets more out in front of you but the better setup immediately gave you a better takeaway. What I'm looking for is this. Okay, so hips over ankles, we tilt, we keep them there, we flex down, 70, 30. All right, the pressure remains up in the front of the foot to the set position. And then it turns back to this side of the rod to the top. And if I was doing that all in sequence, it would be boom slowly moving back there so that when that pressure arrives in the inside of my right heel on this side of the rod, my right pocket, my right shoulder have reached their deepest point, my hands, my arms, my club all got up there together, right? That's, that's the key. So we found that that immediately helped you guys both out just from having the right setup, having an understanding of how that setup helps us make the right swing and really feel connected from the ground up, meaning the pressure arrives in that foot, the body completes its turn, the arms, hands, and club all arrive at the top. You have all those components of connection coming together. Okay, so here's the thing. Hips over ankles. You see that? That hip joint right over the ankle. So I drew the ankle, and you know, our hip joint, if we're being honest right here, is right back in here. So we gotta get that more over. When you do this setup correctly, you're also playing golf underneath you versus playing golf around you. Sitting back, well, here's golf around me. Well, you know, notice how the release is very different there. Well, my palm is only facing the target for a split second, and then it's gone. So it's very easy to let go early, have it out there, let go late, have it go this way. But watch this. Hips over ankles, shoulders past toes, playing golf underneath me. My palm is doing what? It's down the line a lot longer my club face is a lot more square, longer as well. And what do you see? The ability to throw those two balls within about a foot of each other on that line, right? So that's simply as a result of a good setup. You can expect to see a better takeaway. You can expect to see a better turn to the top. And we also have room and space to play golf underneath us. Great putters keep their hips over their ankles. Everything's working out great. Towards the end of the round, the hips sit back. We get a little lazy. All of a sudden, on a left to right putt, that putter pulls back a little inside, shove it out right. Why? Because we forget those simple checkpoints, hips over ankles, right? Ooh, man. Nice job, buddy. Hey, you know what? It's a good time to work on some compression. Here we go. Pitching wedge. I mean, who, could, who couldn't use some compression? Come on. I mean, everybody needs a little compression, right? Divots past the golf ball in compression the knockdown mentality, the knockdown mentality. It's a mindset, it's not just a technique. Yes, we talked about a couple things that can be in place, the feeling through the golf ball, but once that feeling is felt a couple times, these guys aren't thinking about technically what to do. They're just thinking about, I'm gonna push this golf ball down into the turf. If I'm hitting out this way, here's a little bit of that knockdown mentality. 
Hear that sound? Okay, now watch this. If I were to pull this golf ball in, let's zoom in here. If I were to pull that golf ball in, I mean, look at the divots well past that ball. Now, you know, really cool, I learned this from Bobby Clampett, you guys, a really cool, uh, he was a great amateur, great professional also, um, up in the Pebble Beach area. And he, he told me, he has a school called the Impact, Impact Zone, and, and what he did was he taught me about, you know, the average low point for the golf swing for a seven iron on the PGA Tour is approximately four inches past the golf ball. Well, look, one, two, three, four, about four inches past the golf ball, you see the depth of that divot, right? And, and to me, yeah, it was definitely technique that helped make that possible. No doubt about it. You have to have a great angle set here in order to hit down. People who take the club inside and don't have any angle, good luck. You're not making a divot. Not going to happen. Unless you do the sledgehammer, <laughs> which nobody wants that. We've all seen that swing on the range before. Get the club set the right way. We work these drills just like this. You know, hey, set the, set the L. Look at the L between the left arm and the golf club. Pull it through. That becomes a mindset to our players. That feeling isn't just a, oh, I, I swing and that just happens. That's a mentality. Because guess what? If I just casually get in here, guys, I want you to know this. If I just casually get in here and I just start swinging, like don't really think about anything. Look, at I mean, that's nice. If I swept it right off the surface, there wasn't really any mindset to that of like, hey, let's get it. But let's get it is this. Like, okay, hold on a second here. Let me really get into this golf shot. Look at, we're just grabbing the ground with our feet, grabbing our arms and hands with our core. And as Pops always said, grab the club face with your mind. Boom. And there's the compression, there's the sound we want, right? So really important that, you know, that's, that's a mindset built in before I ever pulled the trigger. All right, buddy, here we go. We're gonna start setting that club at chest high with a simple understanding. We're creating an angle between the left arm and the club. If I drove that angle down at, in my mind, what is a 45 degree angle? That's what's compressing the ball. That most underestimated muscle in the human body, the left tricep for a golfer. Why? What, what, I mean, look at the top of the swing. If I had a band around my arm, grabbed it here. Whew. Yeah, it's rotation, but guess what? The only way that arm is staying in front of the body center is if it has the ability to get everything through, the weight of the club, the handle, the club head, right? So when I get set here, as my left pocket goes back, my left arm is going through, and that angle is driving down to the golf ball. My pocket moving that way is rotating my body and squaring the face up. The back of my left arm and left shoulder pulling down towards the ball that's that tiger squat that you see, right? Where everything goes this way, boom. That's what gets that angle of attack. So that's what gets the contact past the golf ball. So if you're, you're looking over my shoulder here, you can see the Callaway logo on the ball. He's literally thinking that he's driving the club on top of that logo and hitting down on top of the ball at a spot out in front of it. I mean, that's what- Look at that divot in front of the golf ball and try to get your club going right through it. There was the shot we're looking for. There's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, dude, I'm loving it. Look at the connection right there. Just literally rotating and that ball's just going zoom, right down the line. Dad, we got Dad over here. Look how, look how silky that's been. Watch, this. Watch how silky this is. Oh, look at the smoothness and the rhythm. And look at Penny over here. Does he have... <laughs> that's awesome.